Welcome to this video where we continue to assess the performance of PID controllers. And in this video, we look at the proportional plus derivative control action. We look at the proportional plus derivative control or controllers. And as the name suggests, then the control action is partially proportional and partially a derivative of the error signal, which can be written as U of T is equals to KP E of T plus KD DDT of E of T. If you have to write it in Laplace form, then we'd obtain U of S is equals to KP E of S plus S KD E of S, from which our controller will be defined by U of S over E of S is equals to KP plus S KD. And this is the mathematical description of the PD controller. We proceed to assess its performance on different types of systems. And so far we've noted that one of the issues with systems control we've not been able to handle or solve is the issue of stability. And we noted that with the integral control action, we are able to sort out the issues of steady state performance of the system. If we are to subject this system or this control action onto a type zero first order system, we have to subject this control action onto a type zero first order system. The controller is defined by KP plus SKD. And for a type zero first order system, the system is defined by G of S is equals to one over KS plus C, where K and C are constants. From this, we can obtain the open loop transfer function of the system, which will be the product of the two KP plus S KD over KS plus C. The closed loop transfer function will be obtained as, remember we are dealing with negative feedback systems where we have unity feedback. The closed loop transfer function of the system will be given as KP plus S KD over K plus KD into S plus KP plus C. Given that the system is subjected to a unit step input, R of S will be one over S for a unit step input. And therefore the steady state performance of the system will be obtained as the limit as S tends to zero of S multiplied by the closed loop transfer function of the system, which is KP plus S KD over K plus KD into S plus KP plus C multiplied by one over S, which is our input. And we notice that the steady state value of our system will be KP over KP plus C and certainly this will be less than one. It's good to note that with the proportional plus derivative control, we are not able to obtain the steady state performance of the system or the, we're not able to obtain a zero steady state error for a type zero first order system. And therefore the proportional plus derivative control action will not be a suitable controller for a type zero first order system. It's also good to notice that when we have a proportional plus derivative control action, 
there is going to be the introduction of a zero, a zero at S is equals to negative KP over KD. We introduce a zero at S is equals to negative KP over KD. Now, introducing a zero to the system at KP, negative KP over KD pulls the root locus to the left. If you are to sketch the location of the zero, it's a point on the negative real axis to the left of the imaginary axis. This is the imaginary axis and this is the real axis. So the point negative KP over KD is going to be a point to the left of the negative real axis. And then you can see pulling the root locus to the left is going to improve the stability margin of the system. And therefore the proportional plus derivative control action is able to improve on the stability margin of the system, which is a feature we've not been able to achieve with all other types of system. And this is one of the advantages of the proportional plus derivative control action in that it's able to improve on the stability margin of the given system. Suppose we consider a proportional plus derivative control action on a type one second order system. And we also consider a proportional control action on a type one second order system. If you have type one second order system, you have a type one second order system for a proportional control action only, for a proportional control, then the pro controller is defined by KP and the control system is defined by G of S is one over KS squared plus CS for a type one second order system from which we would obtain the open loop transfer function of the system to be equal to KP over KS squared plus CS. And the closed loop transfer function for a negative feedback, unity feedback system, it will be obtained as KP over KS squared plus CS plus KP, which can also be written as KP over K over S squared plus C over S over KS plus KP over K. If we compare this with the general transfer function of a second order system defined by omega N squared over S squared plus two zeta omega N S plus omega N squared, if you compare that closed loop transfer function with that of a general second order system, we will notice that our natural frequency of oscillation will be defined by KP over K square root. And our two zeta omega N will be equal to C over K from which zeta will be defined by C over two omega N K which will be equal to C over two, and then the square root of KP K. This is the value of the damping factor for our given system C over two, the square root of KP K. Let's consider when we have a proportional plus derivative control action on the same type and order of system, type one and second order system. For a proportional plus derivative control, then we obtain we have the closed loop transfer function of the system as follows. So the, system, the controller is defined by KP plus SKD. The system is defined by G of S is one 
over k s squared plus c s from which the open loop transfer function of the system again will be obtained as kp plus skd over k s squared plus c plus k d s plus k p which <clears throat> This is the closed loop transfer function, the closed loop transfer function of the system, which can be defined as kp over k plus s kd over k over s squared plus c plus kd over ks plus kp over k. If again, we compare the characteristic equation of this system being a second order system with that of the general trans, uh, transfer function of a second order system, we are comparing S squared plus C plus KD over K, S plus KP over K. We compare this with S squared plus two zeta omega N S plus omega n squared, we'll notice that still our omega would be obtained as kp over k square root. And our zeta will be obtained as c plus kd over two omega n k, which will be equal to c plus kd over two, the square root of kp k. This is the resulting damping factor for a proportional plus derivative control action on a type one second order system. Now, initially our damping factor is defined by c over two, the square root of kp k. And now our damping factor is C plus KD over two square root of KPK. From this, we can see that K zeta, which is our damping factor has increased. But our natural frequency of oscillation remains unchanged. So zeta has increased, but the natural frequency of oscillation remains unchanged. Let's look at the effects of increasing the damping factor on certain performance criteria of our given system. For example, the setting time is defined by four over zeta omega n or three over zeta omega n, depending on the percentage error that we want to achieve for our given system. So with 5% would have three over zeta omega n, and with 2% would have four over zeta omega n. That means if you increase zeta, the settling time of our system is going to reduce. And therefore the settling time reduces. Reducing the settling time basically means that the system's response becomes faster. And therefore, a proportional plus derivative control action is able to reduce on the settling, increase on the settling time, and thus re reduce the settling time, and by so doing, reduce or it makes the system's response faster. The overshoot of a system is defined by overshoot is given by exponential negative zeta pi over one minus zeta squared square root. The definition of the overshoot of any given uh, system. If you increase zeta, you notice that the overshoot of the system is going to reduce. And for a proportional plus derivative controller, we can notice that it's able to reduce on the overshoot. We can conclude therefore and say that the PD control action 
increases damping of the system, and this reduces overshoots. The derivative component of the control arm also makes the system's response faster by reducing the settling time. Reducing the settling time also improves on the transient response of the given system. We have also noted that the proportional plus derivative control action adds a zero to the system, pulling the root locus to the left, and by so doing, improving on the stability margin of the given system. And those are the advantages of the proportional plus derivative control action. However, the output has an unzero steady state error when used on type zero first order systems. And therefore, proportional plus derivative control action does not improve on the steady state performance of type zero systems. And therefore, it would not be a controller of choice for type zero systems. And that is the performance of the proportional plus derivative control action. And that is the end of my discussion in this video on the proportional plus derivative control action. Thank you for watching this video.